Hello, I'm back. I took about a week, week and a half off, got a new job, things kind of got a little hectic there for a bit, but uh, back to recording, back to doing what I love to do, talking to you about the book of James, what, what, hey -o. Um, yeah, that was kind of bad, but today is the all-important topic of what the Bible says is called Taming the tongue, which, which we'll get into, says it's basically impossible. It's impossible because everybody has a big mouth to some extent. We all say things we shouldn't. We over uh, give too many details to people in conversations and maybe disclosing some confidence that we had in other people or that other people shared with us in confidence and we let it out a little bit too much. Been guilty of that. Uh, don't try to be guilty of that, but I have been guilty of that. Um, so today we're talking about it's what it's called taming the tongue. I'll get right into it, and uh, you can get some of your Bible for today. I'll read it to you so you can hear it. And I do believe that the Word of God has power. Just by you hearing this will transform your lives. I do believe that because it's the Word of God. It's been around 2,000 years. Many people have died for this, so listen up, it's important. Okay, I'll read it real quick. Maybe I won't. The fan changed it to uh, a different page. Okay, now I've got it. Chapter 3 of the book of James, verses 1 through 9. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man able to keep his whole body in check. Check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we could turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are large, uh, they are driven by strong winds, they are steered by very small rudders and wherever the pilot wants to go. <coughs> Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. <laughs> just reading that, it's just like, holy smokes. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. True. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. That's a mouthful. But basically it goes into great detail to talk about how you could get yourself into trouble with your tongue. So I'll just pray for you guys. God bless whoever's watching this. Lord, I pray that you strengthen their willpower to obey you and to tame their tongue. That if they've had problems in the past of uh, saying too much or getting themselves into trouble by their mouth, I pray that you'd bless them and give them wisdom and courage to keep quiet when they want to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. So I believe that prayer will do what I prayed it for you. I believe that in faith. So to start at the top, not many of you should presume to be teachers because we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all know that. See all those preachers on TV, you know, they always get a lot to say, but everybody's judging them for what they have to say. And God is too because, you know, if you get people that are off on some theology or what they're telling you to do, like me, I'm on this video telling you uh, not to get in trouble with your mouth pretty safe topic you could probably all agree with that one whether you're a Christian or not a Christian you could probably believe that so I think I'm safe for today's topic but in general anybody and, it, and if yourself um, just to watch what you say when you're a position of authority where people look up to you respect you you are whether you like it or not put in a position of authority and that you'll be held to a higher standard in this world and uh, on judgment day in front of God God's like, what'd you do that for? Or, good job, 
you you honored me by the way you live and uh, basically when you're in that position I'm speaking to teachers now or people in authority that have influence over others uh, to be selfless instead of selfish so that when you're trying to communicate to people you're doing it in truth and in love and based on the facts not because you just want to tell whatever you want to say because it's your opinion uh, and to those who are Bible teachers we have to teach what it says not what we want it to say and that's kind of tough sometimes because a lot of us out there in the world nowadays don't really like sometimes what the Bible has to say like and I'll get into it you know when your set your tongue is set on fire and by the fires of hell I mean that's kind of harsh but that's what it says so I'm just gonna tell you what it says and leave it at that so if you're in a position of authority just care for the people that are under your authority and uh, speak truth and love and life to them. Okay, that's the first part. Next part, you know, it talks about being able to ride a horse and turning the horse with the bit and bridle. Or a ship, a little rudder steers the whole ship. And uh, how a forest is set on fire by a little spark, you know. I mean, half of these shows on TV, my wife watches Real Housewives of New York, New York, Miami, Beverly Hills, Orange County, and I catch in and walk in on snippets of it. It's amazing what kind of forest fires on those shows can be set by what people say. That's half of what is going on is, you said this, no I didn't, yes you did. I saw you back at that party we went to at Christmas and you said this to my husband and I didn't like it. That's like half the show and they could get so much drama airtime out of that. It's amazing. That's all this show is. Basically, it is people with too much money and too little to do talking and creating drama. Usually there's alcohol involved as well. You gotta check that one in there. But it is entertained to a degree, but then after that it's like stomach churning, like, oh my gosh. So that's kind of a high level or extreme example of what a tongue could do. And then it says after that, the whole, uh, the whole forest fire deal. It corrupts a whole person, sets your whole course of your life on fire. I could see that. You know, it's your job or your work, and you say what you really think during a meeting, and uh, it doesn't go over so well. You're branded. And sometimes the only thing you can do after that point is to find a new job because it may block you from promotion. It may, uh, you know, ruin reputations, maybe ruin your uh, relationships with your higher-ups and your co-workers and uh, can have a very devastating effect and I'm sure some of you have that story some of you don't but some of you know what I'm talking about you screwed up at work by saying something stupid and it happens and maybe it's something that was just boiling up on you over six months to a year and you just finally just had enough and it was that day where they took your red stapler for the last time and you just burned down the building <laughs> I'm talking about office space of course but we all have those moments where we just let a rip and it feels good as you're doing it but by the end of when your tirade is ending you kind of know that you've done uh, irrecoverable damage to you and to your hearers and everybody else and so you probably just end up finishing anyways with the last one two punch verbally and then kind of walk away still mad still feeling self satisfied and then about five minutes later you wonder hmm it's probably going to have some bad repercussions. That's what we're trying to avoid. And that might not be be everybody's experience, but in general, that kind of situation. So at the end here it says, So with our tongue we praise our Lord, our Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. That's true. I mean, we all, you know, if you're just starting to become in touch with God or you're really in touch with God you can still and it doesn't have to be a curse but basically cursing someone by demeaning them putting them down talking about them behind their back I just found it a good practice just to bless those who curse you or the people you don't like pray God's blessing over them because it takes away from the hurt that's in your heart it takes away from your revenge I mean I'm talking people that have hurt you I'm talking people that talk about you right now behind your back 
to pray God's blessing over them. Because number one, they probably need to be back in touch with God because they're hurting for whatever reason. And whatever the reason is, is you may be the target of it or you may be the person targeting someone else. And you just need to learn to bless that person that you just hate and you don't know why you hate them. And I'm talking to you. <laughs> and you know that I'm talking to you. And uh, you just need to bless that person to stop gossiping about them, stop hurting their reputation. And if you're on the receiving end of this kind of treatment, bless the person that's cursing you. And that could be the hardest thing in the world you want to do. All you want to do is tell all your friends why so-and-so is talking bad about you and how you hate them and how stupid they are. Just stop the cycle. Bless them in Jesus' name. And when it comes up again in your mind, bless them again and bless them again. Eventually the blessing wins. The cursing never wins. It just creates shows like Real Housewives of Orange County or whatever. So you, you get what I'm saying. Blessing triumphs over cursing. Last week it was mercy triumphs over judgment. Well, it kind of fits hand in hand. So, and it goes on to say, you know, you can't have a, a stream full of salt water and then have it produce fresh water. It just doesn't happen. So, keep your mouths fresh. Keep them clean. Bless others that curse you. Stay fresh. We'll see you next week. God bless.